WEETV, coming to you from the epicenter of physical culture, also known as Austin, Texas. Um, what a day it is out there today. Uh, plenty of vitamin D to be had. <laughs> um, don't know. It's definitely fixy weather today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or climbing or whatever you want or to do. <laughs> Basketball, dog walking. Yeah, yeah. Um, we are here to be your filter for all that is health and fitness related. Um, last night was um, ABC's Nightline, uh, Rob Wolf and Art Devaney, and a segment on kind of the Paleolithic uh, diet slash lifestyle was on. Uh, any thoughts, any comments there, um, other than weeding through the Charlie Sheen crap? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> other than reminding me why I do not watch mainstream news. Um, mm -hmm. We're addicted to winning at efficient exercise. <laughs> <laughs> just... Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, just uh, kind of glossed over a, a very, very, very uh, important topic. I mean, it just in kind of made light of the the diet and really didn't give either Art or Rob a chance to explain very much at all. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. kind of the whole Charlie Sheen thing, I guess, bumped bumped into their segment and and uh, truncated priorities, a lot priorities, of priorities. Yeah. Priorities. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, you know, I thought Rob Wolf got in some good <clears throat> at the end when he was going on about you know this is not the lunatic fringe. Sure, yeah, that, and that that component yeah. of it. Um, I thought it was funny how almost squeamish to the meat the host was. No, just a little bit. Yeah, just yeah, a little yeah, yeah. bit. No, not so much meat, please. No, never say no to steak. Never say no. To I'll take a little. I'll take yeah, a yeah. little. <laughs> oh, just a tiny bit. Oh. Um, and the old I brainwashing thought, is still there. I thought. Well, yeah, and I thought. I thought they could. Uh, I thought they did a better job of not. They, they didn't sort of push the caveman component. In fact, they kind of dismissed the caveman aspect yeah. early, mm -hmm. and you know, using it as a as uh, uh, is used by Panu, you know, uh, as Harris says, it's a learning heuristic. Old. Uh, we could even call it the 19th century diet, and yeah. that wouldn't no, be that no. far off. I mean, yeah. it really pre pre refrigeration diet. Yeah. Um, it's to, to put it more in perspective. And I like how they had the nutritionists who, uh, <laughs> nutritionist, it's an empty term. I mean, nutrition, you don't go to school like I, I got my BS in nutrition. You, you take nutrition courses, but you, and you might have a nutrition background um, built into a graduate program, but there's no title of, like, mm -hmm. the title of nutritionist is almost self anointed. Right? And there is a lot of BS in nutrition. Yeah, right. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, at dietitians, you know, so I wonder if those, if those women, and they were kind, you know, like, well, it's getting rid of processed stuff. That's good. You know, yeah, if they stay yeah. with lean meats and I'm sort of like, where are you getting, yeah, where, are you yeah, getting that, that, yeah, where are you getting your energy? Where you getting your energy? You can have carbs, you can have fat, you can't you use protein. And I'm just wondering well, how many people, how many people that, that have not been exposed to this, what they thought of it. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm kind of, um, of course, in the inner circle, so I view it one way, and I haven't talked to anybody yet who's outside of the circle and, and mm -hmm. that has seen it, and I'm kind of wondering what their impression of it of it was, and it, you know, if they if it intrigued them enough to look into it further, if if, if that's the case, fantastic, mm -hmm. I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. I'm all for it. Yeah, and I am reminded that I mean, oftentimes we are early adopters, if you will, <laughs> or outliers. Um, that you know, that's what I'm reminded of sometimes when watching this mainstream media is they always present it and slant it a certain way and mm -hmm. um, it annoys me enough but um, it also reminds me that yeah we're somewhat on the fringe if you sure. will although Rob said it's not really the fringe if you take everyone as a whole it's still yeah somewhat is, is yeah. a fringe yeah. if you want to say that yeah, that way but, uh, yeah. uh, uh, he brought up a point there was a oh well you know and Devaney is impressive enough um, as far as like taking 73 and he's towing sure. the Land Rover yeah. and, and um it was easy. It was easy. That's no, that's no problem. That's right. That's, <laughs> that's easy no for problem. him. Yeah. There's no problem. Um, so, may, just having the visual of these people not sure. you know, eating all this this fat. Although they didn't really touch much on the fat component. They didn't say like they eat huge amounts of fat. Yeah. Yeah. They say eat meat, meat. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's. I think that's a step. It's a small step, but sure. it's a step. Sure. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything that gets the door to crack open this a little bit. Mm -hmm. to, a uh, little, little bit of light in. Mm -hmm. That's good. And, and I'm glad they gave Rob the opportunity to say that this is not, to your point, yeah. not a caveman reenactment yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That's simply the 
simply the, the scaffolding, mm -hmm. simply something mm -hmm. to go by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. mm -hmm. So that, that was good that they at least let him get that. In. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and you said you're reminded why you don't watch this mainstream media, and I'm, I'm just kind of thinking out loud here with the, uh, you know, what is the role of mainstream media going to be in five years, ten years? Sure. Is that going to be less and less of an impact? I mean, I don't know, kind of yeah. off topic a little yeah. bit here, but what you know, makes no, me think yeah, about yeah, it? You know? you know, it's almost like, I wonder if it's going to be more and, <clears throat> more and more like the blogs, like Docker Media or Huffington mm -hmm. Post, and then the problem becomes, well, is this news? And the, the question of, of what is, is it news because someone wielding a network that has millions and millions of dollars of commercial right. revenue deems it to be news? Um, mm -hmm. Or is it news because a lot of people end up reading it? And this is part of why I use uh, my clients as a filter. I don't read the newspaper, the old Tim Ferriss uh, sure. sort of information filter. Yeah. My clients will come to me and say, have you read this? And go, no. And they'll tell me about it. And I'll, then if I want to go explore it yeah. or not, sure. I'll just yeah. go, okay, push a little harder. Keep doing your workout, you know. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, I don't know. Five years from now, if it was going to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and the, and I think the information filter is vital in this day and age with tons of information being out there, and how do you process through it all? Um, well, um, on to our kind of let's call it FAQ section, but another one that we get from clients often: a prospective <coughs> female client will come to us, um, you know, uh, maybe with a little bit of the intimidation of strength training and weight training in general. But the question inevitably will come, well, I don't want to get big and bulky. I don't want big muscles. So what do we say to that, and how do we, how do we address that issue there? Um, if you can not laugh. No, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> um, I, I wish I could take these ladies and show them a, a, a competitive body, female bodybuilder, um, a natural competitive female bodybuilder. Natural, that's it. Key. And see, it, natural is a key. <laughs> and see how hard, and they're already genetically gifted to be a little bit more muscular, and see how desperately hard they try to put on just a little bit of muscle. Mm -hmm. Desperately hard. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it, um, it's just, the hormonal profile for most women is just not there to put on, to put on muscle. It, it's just not. Um, the... the the big thing, the big body recomposition changes in females, for the most part, is fat loss. Mm -hmm. that, that's the that's mm -hmm. the big change. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I can tell you, in, in all the years that I have been around weights, a long time, I have never seen anyone, <laughs> female, mm -hmm. just get big yeah. quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just does not happen unless there is a concerted effort, a huge effort towards that. And I mean bodybuilding, really mm -hmm. going at it bodybuilding-wise. Mm -hmm. And you really have to be genetically gifted then, plus the intensity, plus the drive, plus everything else to even get that little mm -hmm. bit. So mm -hmm. females coming in, for the most part, that that are, are wanting recomposite, body, bodily recomposition, yes, they can put on a little bit of muscle, but getting big, it's, it's not going to happen. Yeah, it just yeah, does yeah. not happen. I think it was uh, Charles Staley who puts it as, you know, if I started doing ballet, would I suddenly grow breasts? Sure. And there's an element of that. This is supposedly, a, or it's dying because mm -hmm. it, just a younger generation, the element yeah. of mm -hmm. this is uh, a man's game. And so I have to worry about this. But um, women don't have enough testosterone. Um, there's the element, too, of. Oftentimes, individuals pick up a training program, and that might possibly increase their appetite. And as a result, they start eating more, whether they recognize it or not. Especially yeah. if they're not eating in any particular way that has built-in kind of barriers, if it's a smorgasbord of food in their daily life. Um, so uh, you, the question becomes, well, these, these women will appear to bulk up, and really they probably put on a little bit more fat in combination with their muscles becoming a little bit more toned, mm -hmm. carrying a little more glycogen because they're being trained. Mm -hmm. So then the question that I, I feel at them and I go, okay, so is exercise fattening? And of course, I was like, oh, no, of course not. And I go, then what in your life is fattening? And the light bulb might slow, it, it won't pop on. It's more like a dimmer sort of like, uh, <laughs> uh, Oh, yeah, all that, I've been eating more. And, yeah. and they sort of admit to it that roundabout way. So, yeah. I've never seen it. I had one woman. No, no, no. Back up. I had one woman, <laughs> whom, uh, 
you know, she just had, she had like cyclist legs. Yeah. 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 And, and I mean, women have a propensity to have relative to their upper body, larger legs yeah. than men, like proportions. So yeah, she was just. And this gets back yeah. into the, the causation correlation right. thing. So, so women will see speed skaters, Olympic cyclists mm -hmm. and think mm -hmm. if I do a lot of exercise for my lower body, I'm going to look like that. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. It's, mm -hmm. Those women are in that sport because yep. they look like that. They have because legs. they have that, it's it's not the other way around. Mm -hmm. The other ones were weeded out a long time ago. And actually, a long time. Yeah, it's funny you mention that. This this weekend, I was uh, filming um, cyclists out at the JJ Pickle <clears throat> Research Facility. They did. They basically set up a loop out there. Um, I'm filming for a sports medicine clinic, and they and in the lot they've got their trainers and they're cranking away, and, and you could just. They're all in tights, you know, they're all in tight sure. spandex. So you can go through and you can sort of see those who are, who got there through really hard work. And this is probably the zenith of their, sure. of their talent and those who, who could give a lot more. And you had people with not too large legs cranking away and mm -hmm. being relatively competitive, probably because they've had to work so hard. Yeah. And you had others who were just, they had ham steaks, you know, mm -hmm. just, just enormous, yeah. just huge legs, mm -hmm. um, working just as hard right in the middle of the pack no difference in training and or at least no difference in the result of the no, training and no. yet one had enormous thighs and the other had mm -hmm. slightly larger than normal thighs yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. it kind of leads me to um another again slightly off topic but uh, as we're discussing this um maybe on the male side of things it's like well i want to train because i want bigger arms well maybe let's discuss thoughts opinions on the role of let's take leg exercises on bigger arms or what you, what you feel about that. And, um, yeah, you know, uh, do you, you know, is it bicep curls all day long or is it your choice of arm exercises or your genetic card? Just, you know, yep. open so, up the um, arms or... so if you want to talk about systemic, um, effects of exercise. So, so we go back to the old canard of, if you want big arms squat and, and, and that goes back to, the systemic response of some of the hardcore exercises like squats or deadlifts. Um, and then you're talking about the resultant hormonal changes mm -hmm. from, from that exercise. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess, um, yes, to some extent, if you want bigger arms, there is obviously arm work involved, but it can't all be arm work. It's gotta be a systemic thing because the big, the big bang for the buck exercises the hardcore ones are the ones that shift the hormonal profile, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. really what you want. And, and you want that combination. Yeah. You definitely yeah. want that combination. I mean, so. it, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want the leg work, and you need it. But we've seen more. Guys, I've seen more guys than I can count on all of my digits. That um, at a gym I used to work at, that you know, the light bulb look. I mean, the muscles ultimately sure. do respond to stress. Sure. Uh, it has to be of a significant quality. That's why bricklayers don't have huge biceps or enormous forearms. Um, but you want your muscles to get bigger, you have to demand more of them. If you want them to get smaller, you demand less of them. And then you have your seedling dictated by whatever genetic hand you've been dealt, which you don't know until you go exploring. You don't just say, ah, I've got small wrists, so I'm never going to have this yeah. performance or mm -hmm. this size arm or what have you. You don't know until you go find out. Um, it's a combination. The hormone profile is the big, a big yeah. aspect of it because, um, yeah, I mean, you and you do have to support all the musculature in your upper body. Talking about the spine last week and, and sort of the way it's built, you got to use a lot of muscle to hold this all upright because most of the upper back isn't meant to be supporting the weight from the top yeah. down, at least functionally. You got to squat if you got to squat, and your sport requires it, and so that's going to make it locking in the shoulder blades back and powering and, and creating that stable platform. And that's all work. If you're not thinking about, I'm working my lower trapezius to create a shelf for the sure. squat bar, but it's doing it. it it's holding it. So, uh, yeah, it's an all of the above. You're not. You never found a guy who just squatted and ended up with huge arms. Sure. That's not yep. what's being said. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it it all contributes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, well, Keith, you had uh, kind of mentioned. I know you discussed this in your your blog. Um, somewhat of the theoretical versus the practical. Um, you know, paradigm of, of, well, you've got real world constraints of time, energy, um, you name it, um, kids, what work, busy work schedule. Um, so what should someone aim for, at least how I kind of would think would be helpful to viewers here is 
um, and maybe we've somewhat touched in on this, but uh, what would someone need to aim for in balancing that, you know, theoretical versus so, practical? So this is the old uh, paralysis by analysis thing. So you, you can go on the internet, you can get books, you, you can find the perfect workout or, or construct what you think will be the perfect workout for you. Then you get out to the real world, into the gym, you don't have the equipment, you don't, you know, someone's on the, in the power rack doing friggin' curls, all, all this, all these real world things hit you in the face and then you're just kind of, ugh, you're stuck that you don't know where to turn. Um, I remember a football coach telling me at one point, you know, the X's and O's, studying the X's and O's, all the practice, all of this, all of this that's going on in here. All of this on paper, the way things work, you know what? When you walk out of the tunnel and on the field, it, it, none of that may come about. Yeah. You're going to have to rely on your athleticism and, and just your basic instincts of how to play the game a lot of times. Yeah. Same thing in the weight room. Mm -hmm. All the perfect things can be put together, but you've got to get, actually get in the weight room and actually do the exercise. I guess is what, what I'm trying to say. Sometimes the perfect is not going to be there. Mm -hmm. It's just not. So you're going to have to make do with what you've got. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this gets back to um, putting intensity into what you do have. So let's just, let's just back up and mm -hmm. say, I've got kids, I've got a job, I've got this, I've got all these things. I'm never going to have the optimal workout scenario. Yep. You, you're just not. I think the last time I had it was when I was back in college. That was probably <laughs> it. It's been a long time since I've had the perfect scenario. But you do the best you can with what you got. And that's, so you, yes, I know in the back of my mind what would be perfect. And I take little bits and pieces of that. And when I finally get into the gym, I marry that to what equipment I have. And I go to work and I throw intensity in to whatever I have. And that, that, that is the key. Intensity is one thing you can bring anywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And that is, that is really the key, <clears throat> intensity. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. like the uh, whether the, the barbarians. Uh, if you look up on YouTube, uh, bar hyphen barbarians, sure. and these are all guys who just uh, work out on uh, uh, schoolyard chin up bars, dip oh, bars, yeah. etc. In New York area, um, and they are ripped and enormously sure. strong, and um, you know they put in the work. Yep. Ultimately, they and they're working <clears> very hard to get better at doing more chins or single arm chins or uh, sort of dive bomb sort of dip holds on, sure. on parallel bars and uh, they do a really good job of you know putting those in the gym to a lot of people in the gym to shame because mm -hmm. they sure. they treated this training not as working out mm -hmm. they need to get better every time they're there yeah yeah, yeah. so and i think you might have mentioned that last time keith uh, i'm probably mixing things up but uh, you know you'd rather see intensity and quality on maybe a less than perfect exercise Absolutely. as opposed to hey yeah. you're doing a let's just say squat but you're not doing it very much intensity yeah. or, or quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I've, I've seen that a lot of times. Well, I don't have whatever, this piece of equipment, So they, and then the, then the intensity then wanes on the other stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what? You're, you're never going to have every piece of equipment you need. It's just not going to happen. You're never going to have the, the time you need. You're never, you're never going to have a lot of things. Mm -hmm. it, there's always going to be that excuse if I don't have something. Mm -hmm. So what you do is throw intensity into what you do have, mm -hmm. in the time you do have, and you can make tremendous gains. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tremendous gains. Well, and even some general answers here, general guidelines. Okay, so you have, let's say, thirty minutes a week to dedicate to exercise. What 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 do you do? What do you attack first? Sure. Um, if you're just the everyday business Joe, what I go for is always go for the big. Bang for the buck exercises. That's the easiest thing to hit. You squats, deadlifts, uh, some kind of overhead press, um, some kind of very, very intense core work. Um, the, those, those are the easy go-to answers. And then all the derivatives off mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. um, and, that's, and you can pretty much, if you can, if you can take care of that, um, the old 80-20 rule applies. I mean, that's 80% of it there. If you can get that big stuff in, really heavy. So much the better if you can come to us because we can <laughs> then that 30 minutes that you had by yourself seems like a almost like an hour because you don't have to change somebody's right ahead of you mm -hmm. changing your weights getting you mm -hmm. set up you don't have time to mm -hmm. breathe my clients don't have time to breathe and I've got them bam <laughs> bam so so that yeah. 30 minutes uh, you get a lot done in a half an hour mm -hmm. yeah a lot really done. Can.
Yeah, I mean, it's, um, you know, it doesn't work for everybody, but there have been a few guys who have benefited hugely from Menser's consolidation routine mm -hmm. where they would do, one week would be a squat or a leg press mm -hmm. and a dip and a chin up, and the next week could be a deadlift and a mm -hmm. chest press mm -hmm. and some sort of row. Yeah. Um, and they would just... You know, it didn't work for everybody because mm -hmm. yeah. not everything does. There are a lot of variables that work for everybody, but the dose and the scheduling of those variables yeah. varies wildly. Um, but it works for a lot of guys, mm -hmm. and it works for uh, and if nothing else, if you go through a period where you only have that, it'll it'll keep the muscle on you. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not a responder that way, if you found you yeah. need more volume to yeah. keep the muscle tissue on, yeah. Yeah. And then that all, that all comes back to the the yeah. systemic effect yeah. of exercise. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 And I'm a big proponent of, like you said, call it a consolidated routine or whatnot. But if you don't have much time, mm -hmm. yeah, pick a press, pick a pull, mm -hmm. and yep. do something with the lower body, whether mm -hmm. it be a squat, like rest, deadlift, sure. that type of thing. Um, you know, go for the big. The big exercise is big compound movement. And then people will use, yeah. strangely enough, they'll do the reverse. Kind of, it's a strange excuse, but they'll they might not squat well and. Mm -hmm. They'll per continue to squat poorly, like they've got enormously long femurs or what have you, um, instead of picking an exercise like a leg press, which might be compared to a squat, depends on what you're trying yeah. to do, quote yeah. inferior is generally considered. But if you don't have the levers for to do a, a if your back's always going to give out yeah. on a squat, and you're never hitting the hips and the thighs yeah. as hard as possible, then why not switch to the leg press because you're going to get a greater systemic fatigue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, it's a pride are, yeah. or an ego thing sure. for a lot of yeah. people, but I mean, if you just look at physics, there are a lot of people that aren't built for squatting, sure. and that's okay, in my opinion. So and you know, and, and you look in the magazines, there's always shots of like uh, the big steroid monsters doing squats, but then if you actually look at all these videos of them working out, they're doing lots of leg press. Sure. You, you yeah. know, they've got guys standing on top yelling at them, and yeah. they've got it packed with weights, and um, and they don't have big legs at all. Lightweight, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie Coleman, yeah. Ronnie Coleman squatting 800 for two or whatever mm -hmm. he's doing, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm just thinking of the 2,300-pound leg press. He yeah, 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 yeah. Or that's right. Ooh, yeah. that was hard. <laughs> <laughs> Always at the end, it just looks a little like dazed. Ooh, that was hard. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, uh, Ronnie. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, See, Dorian didn't have that comedic value. Like, you wouldn't make fun of everything that came out of the Blood and Guts video. Like, you watch no. Ronnie working out, you're like, yeah, lightweight! But with the Dorian stuff, we, it's, mm -hmm. I don't know, it just seems like it's less funny. You're like, what's this yeah, guy it's talking a, about? It's a very, very serious. <laughs> you know, well, they're, they're, Brit different... well, they're British. It's stoic, right? I guess <laughs> that must be it right there. Yeah. Well, and there, seems to be a little, and there seems to be a little bit of this. I think uh, I just was reading Drew Bay was interviewed on condition, conditioning research or something. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 maybe I might yeah, have yeah, yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, uh, no, but, it was conditioned. Okay, research, okay. Um, but anyway, um, I think the question was posed. I don't remember how he answered it, but it does. There does seem to be an element of if you're a high intensity training advocate, you're more serious. I mean, is that true? Is that? I mean, why does that have to be? Um, it's strange. It's almost as if I mean, if you look at some of the old Darden stuff, uh, the Nautilus mid seventies, it always seemed to me like there was a group atmosphere. Yeah, like everybody's yeah. in the constant hut. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it smelled like intensity and people yeah. getting yeah. excited and wanting to have that, uh, what Rob Wolf talked about, is the tribal element. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're not all working out together, but there's an element of support there and almost fun. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then maybe it got into the strange metaphors of like training like you got a gun to your head and <laughs> if you're not yeah. puking, you're not working hard and that takes mm -hmm. serious mm -hmm. concentration. Yeah. And, um, and you, if you're not progressing like you thought you were, you're not be actually seriously working out. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's where it came in from. Mm -hmm. I mean, it it, yeah. it almost see, it, and it seems to me like the yes, you have to have that attitude of intensity. Yes, mm -hmm. you have to work mm -hmm. hard. But it kind of it seems to me like nutrition and muscle gain. At some point, it's pushing with the rope. Mm -hmm. um, are your weights going up? Are you getting stronger? Are you generally having good workouts? Do you think more intensity would suddenly triple that rate of gain? I mean, it, yeah. it's a it's a cost mm -hmm. you know return yeah. that yeah. you want to. Maybe a lot of people are more serious because and maybe even I mean we come out of this mm -hmm. with the super yeah. slow guild of we're not we're not personal trainers. We're exercise instructors. We teach proper exercise, and you have to wear a suit, a shirt and tie. And if you don't wear a shirt and tie, then you're not serious about your job. You're not serious about your job. You're not serious about getting results. And people yeah. aren't going to get results. They're not going to trust you. They're going to think you're just a gym trainer yelling at them going, <laughs> get another one. It's all you, buddy. Yeah, Woo. yeah, yeah. Um, 
Fortunately in Austin, we don't have to walk that line. CEOs rarely wear suit and tie. It's yeah. much more laid back. That's why we've got shirts, right? Yeah. The last place I had it was a shirt and tie. Or what I had was ad as a, as a trainer. Now we're talking seven years ago. But the point is I've seen both. And yeah. maybe that's also why as well. Mm -hmm. The whole, you have to be serious yeah. to be... Well, and I think there is an element to when you're actually hitting it hard with intensity. Yeah. I have never understood how people can just gab during a yeah, workout was, I yeah. mean, because in my book you can't be working that hard sure. if you're just able to gab through it I, I mean, think if, you if know. someone's coming <clears throat> coming into this and is, has a, adopted that kind of training method it takes a certain uh, stoicism I guess mm -hmm. uh, from what we had yeah. life but there, it, it takes a certain mental toughness because you have to for this style to be effective, you have to push through that want to quit barrier. Mm -hmm. And that want to quit barrier comes up rather quick. And every, and I know for me, still, with many exercises, my brain is telling me, shut down, quit, you know, that's it, we're done. And you have to constantly push it. And it takes a certain type of personality to do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, other, other training methods aren't so uh, dependent upon that. And, and I'll just throw bodybuilding type. Uh, mm -hmm. Volume routines. Volume routines. Mm -hmm. And yes, there is intensity there, but it's a different kind of intensity. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, uh, uh, actually going back to the, the bulking up component with women, actually that's one of the things about, for some trainees, is that there's not, especially for, for women who already have the short and the stick on masking, there's, most of the time there's insufficient volume to create that muscular gain. Sure. You, you, you can't, You've got a, a one or two or however few shots mm -hmm. to, to really try and, and make a, a, a change. And if uh, you, you can't come back and be like, yeah, I'll get another set. But in volume training, you, you would do that. Sure. You, you'd think yeah. like, you know what? My biceps aren't That's as it. pumped yeah. as I want. Mm -hmm. Let's strip a little weight. I'll do a few yep. more curls. Yeah, true. And, yeah. you know, there's lessons to be taken from both of them. I mean, from, from all, all of mm -hmm. those techniques. But, yeah, I mean, you're right. You're right is that. Even those guys, even those Ron Coleman videos, which we're sort of laughing about, he's you know he's doing eight to twelve repetitions because sure. as he said in an interview, I think with uh, Alan Aragon, he goes, oh, he seems to be doing a lot. You know, you ever go down to five reps or below? He's like, nah, that's powerlifting. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so he's doing eight to twelve reps, but under no circumstances he's he's talking himself through the workout, you know, yeah. with his screams and his sayings, but he's not. He's clearly working very hard. Oh, yeah. It's still yeah. a heavy yeah. weight for eight to twelve yeah. reps. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and but I'm just, sure, yeah, Tom Platt's doing 20 rep squats, right? Sure. It's yeah. heavy. It's 20 reps, yeah. or it's heavy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, yeah. I know uh, from from say using the the CZT equipment, the the mental the mental place you have to be to to really mm -hmm. really hammer that CZT equipment versus okay, the following day I'll do uh, much more of a uh, a lighter weight, 12 to 15 repetition, more of a bodybuilding type thing in my own special conjugate mm -hmm. whatever you want to call my routine yeah. <laughs> okay but, but I, there is a just there is a definite difference in the yeah. mental the mental toughness i bring mm -hmm. to each one it, it's just totally different mm -hmm. but i think in summary there it is important to be able to maybe somewhat master it as well as others but to be able to flip that switch oh yeah i mean yeah, that's, that's that's important um in my opinion in a lot of areas yeah um, it is but to mm -hmm. flip that intensity switch um, again, everyone has various levels of that, but I think it is important. And I guess to a certain degree, intensity does equal seriousness. I mean, there's sure. just no yeah, way does, around yeah. it, but yeah. It yeah. Does. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, Lando was talking about this and I know we need to get to the, the next segment, but Lando was talking about this in his interview on high intensity nation where he said, you know, some clients are like 10% recruiters. They'll be working really hard and they'll give you all they got, but that's such a low mm -hmm. threshold sure. that they're right on top of you for the next exercise, yeah. or practically your shadow, mm -hmm. as, he, as he called them. Yeah. Um, and other people, they work, you know, the time under load looks the same, and they wor they're working as hard as possible means they're almost dry heaving, you know, on mm -hmm. a, they need time sure. to recover before they go to the next exercise. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and they both might be serious. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to look to tell that our, that, you know, between the three of us, we all have different neurological strengths, weaknesses, and yeah. and probably ability to recruit. I mean, and just and but we might all be equally serious about the training. Sure. So yeah. Yeah. sometimes it's the it's the like the correlation causation. Uh, you don't look like me, and I must be more serious as training. Mm -hmm. sure. you know, the big arm theory. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, well, uh, yeah, Skylar, we did have a 
client, a longtime client of Efficient Exercise over 10 years. Oh, yeah. A longtime client of yours, I guess about mm -hmm. seven years-ish, mm -hmm. yeah. um, that, uh, that wrote in, and we're hoping to encourage uh, more of you to write in and, and uh, give us some questions. Um, this came from Nina, and Nina said, uh, you know, she inevitably knows there are some things that Skylar gives her to do outside the gym, uh, but inevitably she never does them, and um, so uh, basically her question was, as a, quote, senior, although she really protested that moniker, <laughs> um, uh, what is the importance of stretching? Okay. Um, I'll try and be short on this, because we were already running along on time, mm -hmm. which is, you know, uh, wind us up and go. The as we age, um, and especially with the types of jobs and careers that are prominent here in America, mm -hmm. and the sort of the lack of retirement as, as we're experiencing, there's a tendency to do a lot of what we're doing sitting. If you notice, all of us here, we've got crap posture because we're crammed into a space. Yeah. We're living <laughs> in our anterior deltoid mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. but most people are like that anyway on the computer, right? All day long, like this, um, and so. Couple that with the natural tendency as we age to become less supple. Uh, you could look this up on the internet, but there's there's a concept of phasic and tonic muscles. And as we age, phasic muscles get weaker and looser, and as we, and as we age, tonic muscles get tighter. And if you hit all the tonic muscles, if you're to contract them all, which are uh, calves, hamstrings, so as uh, stomach, uh, chest, anterior deltoids, biceps, neck. Uh, extenders, you look old. Like you could have perfect posture, but be a military man, contract all this at the same time, and you will suddenly have uh, the uh, downers hump. Um, and so, I encourage these people if they're going to stretch to focus on the muscles that get tight as stretching. So a lot of a lot of hip flexor stretching, a lot of chest and neck stretching, um, as a means to try and loosen those up because I might have them stretch while they're here, but then they've got the whole rest of the week or time between mm -hmm. when I see them to fall out of place. And, um, never mind that a lot of these clients are coming in, um, with problems that need to be fixed. Uh, they're not blank slates. And so it's even more important to understand that while on a metabolic and health level, as far as heart, lungs, and muscle, we can do a lot in just two sessions, one or two sessions a week. There's a, um, it's like a student in school, you got to do your homework if you want to maximize whatever the result is of this. And that's, that's why I send people home with stretching and mobility mm -hmm. drills. Yeah. Um, and foam rolling, a lot of foam rolling. Um, Which that's a good $20, $30 investment. Uh, yeah. To, oh, to yeah. Make. yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a with you for the life of, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. for a long time kind of thing that really helps posture. Mm -hmm. and all those things. Yeah. So that's why, that's why we do it. Um, and that's why, that's why. You know? Yeah. Just remember, there's a there's a a uh, happy medium we want to hit between stability and flexibility. So, okay. and, and one can be too flexible. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. Martial arts so, will tell you that. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you, mm -hmm. so you need to come into the middle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these people, these people are way off the edge. <laughs> yeah, <they're up. laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. 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 When you can't reach over your head more than this, mm -hmm. you got to open up mm -hmm. those shoulders. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just yeah. the way it needs to be done. So. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you for watching another episode of EETV, and we will see you next week. Thank All you. Right. Bye. Bye.